the name of the living God, who is creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. So, last Wednesday, the school celebrated Palm Wednesday. Of course, um, school isn't in session on Sundays, and so they do such a, we do such a great job at um, Christian education. Um, they, celebrated, they celebrated Palm Sunday on Palm Wednesday. And um, Stacy told me a story. Stacy Irvin, the head of school, said she was waiting, uh, receiving students that morning, and, and this uh, little girl got out of the car and, and uh, Stacy said, welcome, today is, today is Palm Wednesday. And the little girl said, awesome, I love pom-poms. <laughs> <laughs> a great sense of joy, and that's really a part of this day. I mean, I hope you folks who are out there and you were in here felt a sense of joy. I mean, they certainly that was what was going on on that first Palm Sunday. People were excited. Initially, they were excited. They were excited because Jesus was coming. Jesus was coming. At my old church, uh, the Church of the Epiphany in downtown Washington, D.C., we, we also had an emphasis on the procession. And what we did is, it, it's, uh, the church is located three blocks from the White House, one direction, and several blocks from the Capitol in the other direction. And, and what we did, we really gathered just like, just like we did today in the garden, and right, out, right out front, on the cross, next to the sidewalk, um, blessed the palms, and went, went to walk around the block, our block, around our block. And um, we had placards and cross and bagpipes and drums. And on the placards, it said, Hosanna, Hosanna, you know, from the reading. And, and on the back of the placard, it said, follow me. You know, sort of like on the back of a truck or something. And our point was, follow me to church. Come on down to the Church of the Fifty and worship. Um, but those words, follow me, mean a whole lot more than come to Epiphany come to St. James. I think those two words, follow me, are the two most important words for us in the Bible because that's what Jesus said to the disciples. To those first 12, he said, follow me. And they did. And he said that to thousands of others, and they did. And we have heard that call that invitation, and we have said, yes, Jesus, we are going to follow you, and, and here we are, here we are. But not only is there a sense of joy in following Jesus, there's also a sense of concern. Let's look again at uh, at that Palm Sunday. Again, the people were happy. They were excited. But it was a little bit more than simply welcoming a new leader of the people. And, and you can tell in the words that were used. Because they called him the son of David. The son of David, the great king. And yet Jesus was riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, a symbol of humility. Also a quote from the Old Testament, but it's not like this great man is coming to save us from Roman oppression. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't riding on a stallion. He didn't whole lot, have a whole lot of escorts other than those poor guys who were his disciples and the other people in the crowd. And the other note in what was said there is that they called him a prophet. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. I mean, for those Jews to hear that word, they must have said, uh-oh. Because the role of the prophets is not to prophesy of the future. The role of the prophets was to stir things up, to speak the truth to power, whether it be secular or religious power and to call the people back into faithful living, righteous living, following, being faithful to their God. That, that's what the prophets did in the Old Testament, and now this, is being, this title is being given to Jesus. So look out, you know, something's gonna happen here. 
and we are called to follow Jesus. Yes, every year we come to this point from the Palm Sunday celebration through the empty tomb. And throughout it all, we're called to follow Jesus. The tone is set in that entry into Jerusalem, but we know, we know, with hindsight, we know that a lot's going to go on this week. Jesus says to us, follow me. Yes, folks, he says to us, it's going to be exciting. So wave those palms. Yes, it's going to be confusing. Yes, it's going to be comforting. I'm going to wash your feet. Yes, it's going to be frightening. Yes, it's going to be depressing. But follow me. Yes, it's going to be liberating. And it will be joyous one week from today. But follow me. The two most important words for us to hear. It's interesting that um, in the Gospel according to Matthew, before this story of the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, um, Jesus does a, one of his healings. He's, uh, he runs into these two blind men on the road from Jericho, right outside Jerusalem. And um, he says, what do you want? And they say, they say, give us our sight. Isn't that interesting? Before this whole thing happened. Give us our sight. And he touched their eyes and they could see. And I think that speaks to us too. I mean, I think that, um, I think that, you know, if Jesus appeared to us right now and he said, what do you want? We could say, we could say, let us see better. Let us see with our hearts the truth, the justice, the love, the hope which you offer to us all. Let us see with our hearts so that we can believe it and accept it, and it will change our lives. After the entry into Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple, and we are called to follow him, a critical event. The temple was the most sacred place for the Jews, Jerusalem was the most sacred city for the Jews. This was Passover season. Thousands of Jews were there to celebrate, to get ready for the Passover meal. Lots of people had come from far away to be there, to worship together, to remember when they were delivered from captivity, from slavery in Egypt, to remember when they were set free to be who they were called to be. But other things were going on in that city at this time too, too because the Jews were not free. They lived under Roman oppression. The Romans were in charge, they ruled everything. The leaders of the Roman Empire, those who were the governor, the pilots, the Pontius Pilate, uh, the, Herod, the, the people who were there who were in charge, the army, all of them were also not only demanding many taxes from the poor Jews, but they were in collaboration with the temple authorities, the Jewish authorities. So both, for the Jews, both their religion and their secular leaders were dominating them, were taking advantage of them. And that's what Jesus went into. That environment is what Jesus went into when he went to Jerusalem and he walked into the temple or the temple space. It actually wasn't uh, just a building like this. It was a huge, a huge courtyard. I mean, a you know, marble floored courtyard, a huge place where it was sort of a marketplace as well as a place for Jews to gather and um, assemble as people of faith. And, and those who were there to change money, money changers, were really not doing a bad thing. That was necessary for the Jews to have the right coinage to make their offering to God. And those who were there to sell doves and, and other animals were not doing the wrong thing. That was necessary for the Jews to make sacrifices to God. So they weren't the bad guys. They weren't the bad guys. Jesus said, you have made this place of prayer. You've turned it into a den of robbers. What he's saying is, there are people here in this holy space. 
that are not faithful, that are robbing money from the poor. There are people in this place that are using their religious role, their religious authority, to take advantage of the poor. And that is not of God. So don't do it. He was clearly challenging the authorities and the powers that be. And we are called to follow Jesus. Such a journey, such a journey. And this is only the first day. But this is where the story stops for now. I ask you during this week to really take time every day to think about what's going on in the life of Jesus because we're called to follow him. Take it one day at a time. I ask you this morning to come back to church. Come often and early. It's an important time this week, these eight days, to be here together to feel the challenges of Jesus, to feel the pain of Jesus, to feel the hope of Jesus, to feel the love of Jesus at that Last Supper, to feel the desperation of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, to feel the agony of Jesus as he dies, to feel the joy of Jesus as the risen Christ. Next Sunday is going to be a happy day. Between now and then, a lot of other emotions. And they're there for a purpose. Because our faith in Jesus Christ, the risen Jesus Christ, depends on the totality of that story. We just can't pick and choose. The totality of that story. That's the mystery of this faith which we call Christianity. And we have been called to follow Jesus. May this week, in fact, be one of deeply following the one in whom we, we believe, Jesus Christ, the risen one. Amen.